Rhymes like the hands on the clock. You like the hands on the clock. I go back to bat when I'm doing numbers. All the mad that I'm driving the bus, so they threw me under. Heard they mad they don't want to bust, so they boo each other. Think that they're the winning team, go losing, then they choose another. And that's okay, cause I'm competing with me, not you. I live with blessings like I can't stop sneezing, not you. I hate to break up on me and myself, top two. I blow away the competition like a bowl of hot soup. And there's no catch. I go and get the bag, and I'm not bringing it back. I'm like a down QB. I put the pain in the past. And if you ever had a problem, I promise I didn't ask. So it's 444 in the car, my dash. I shake a big toy to mall. You went first, you last. Little boy, that's facts. I'm gonna that cash to my money. <laughs> you know what? Let me stop. <laughs> The city of Seattle, known for coffee, grunge music, and of course, rain. And we're definitely going to get a heavy dose of... city of Seattle known for coffee grunge music and of course rain and we're definitely going to get a heavy dose of the last of those three here tonight as you look inside a wet and wild century link field these folks love their football in Seattle this was the scene a moment ago as the home squad came out of the tunnel and it was just absolutely deafening in this building they're set for football, so are we, as the Seahawks get set to match up with Cam Newton and the New England Patriots. First and ten, Newton. Oh, that was dangerous. Newton threw it into coverage, almost picked. But instead, they'll keep it on second down. I think he's got to be careful not to force anything into coverage right there. There weren't really any throwing lanes. But the best part for him, he's got second and third down to fall back on. Following the incomplete pass, here they go again. Second and ten from the 25. 
Here's a throw that's taken in out of the backfield. And yeah, they nearly get this all the way to midfield. Mark him down at the 49. The catch and run, good for 24 yards. Of course, he was solid last week. AFC Offensive Player of the Week award. Two touchdowns in that game. Yeah, he's playing at a level right now where he's just breaking down defenses. Makes me remember when I was playing and my defensive back coach told me, listen, if you give up a touchdown pass, that's on me. I didn't coach you well enough. If you give up a second one, that's on you. And if there's a third one, I'm getting someone else in the game. <laughs> a very solid gain of 27. The goal for any offense versus his own defense, find the holes where guys are available and put the ball on the receiver before any defender can step up and fill it. They did it well there. Perfectly executed crossing route. He's going to take a shot for the end zone. And this one is incomplete. He was looking for his tight end, Devin Asiasi, there. And that'll bring up second down. I like the thought process there. They connected on a big play, and sometimes you find the defense vulnerable. So they went for the bigger shot, went for it all on that one. This time, they were ready for it. And he's going to take this one down to about the 23-yard line. They do get a couple, but they'll be left staring at a third and eight coming up. Pretty good little two-play sequence there. You force the incompletion and a very short pickup. Yeah, now maybe you bring in an extra defensive back or two because you want to try and defend on third down. They like to play those nickel or sub packages, don't they? Steps away to his left. He may try and run for this. And he'll go out of bounds in the red zone just inside the 20. Pretty solid gain of seven yards that time as he scrambled, but now they face a fourth down. Here's Nick Folk now on for the field goal. A 33-yarder from the left hash. And the 12-year veteran knocks it right through. And the Patriots jump out to a 3-0 lead. Weather like this, always treacherous for kickers. A good sign early, though, is he's able to put that one through. And you remember him right before the kick, stomping around his area to make sure that they were going to hold for his plant foot, and it did. And out a little across the 25 to the 27. First and 10 at their own 27-yard line. Wilson of the Seahawks take over now, first and 10 at their own 27. First carry for Carlos Hyde. He takes this for three to the 29. He's tackled at the That's just a pile of bodies there, and that's when you kind of find out who's a tough guy, right? Who can stand up and make a play? It was only a three yard run, but for both sides, they had to walk away from that feeling like, okay. I can stand up when the going gets tough in here. The last run got three. Now here's second and seven. This is the Oklahoma State alum, Chris Carson. And he is met at the line of scrimmage, and he goes down right there. He shows you right there, he can do more than just cover in the secondary from that free safety position. Yeah, the evolution of the position has really been significant, hasn't it? Because a lot of teams no longer have a free safety, strong safety designation. They just have safeties. So wherever the ball is, one can be close to the line of scrimmage, one can be deep, and vice versa. On that play, how about that tackle we just saw? Pretty nice. And on third and eight, defensively, they're going to beef up the secondary. Six defensive backs. Out of the gun, here's Wilson. Oh, he tries to get it to Metcalf, but it's intercepted. Picked off by the All-Pro, Stephon Gilmore. And he will score! Touchdown, Patriots! So Stephon Gilmore, an All-Pro Defensive Player of the Year in 2019, had his first career pick six a season ago, and he delivers another one here. Footing likely going to be an issue all night here on a rainy night, but this one is good. Seahawks nothing. So they'll get another shot on offense following that pick six, and now the kick is away. This is DJ Reed returning. And he takes this near the 25, just a little pass there, call it the 26. Take over first and 10 
at their own 26-yard line. Coming to the line here to begin their next drive, the Seahawks offense. They'll look to get something started. They need to down 10-0 early as they've got it first and 10. Space to maneuver at the 40. He's at the 50, the 30, the 20, 10. And finally taken down at the four-yard line. It's a big play there for Seattle. And even 70 yards. First and goal at the four-yard line. Well, that didn't take long. One play, and we're already looking at a first and goal situation. Here's Carson, and that'll hurt the average a bit as this time they're able to get him behind the line. That's going to wind up a loss of a full three yards on first down. Well, I know a defensive coordinator is going to be pretty excited by what he just saw there. Great knockback by their front. And now with the ball where it is, I would expect to see the offense throw the ball on second and third down here. And he's going to press this one forward as they stop it right around the one. It'll be a gain of five, and it's going to set up a third and goal. His path became similar to almost running a stretch play, didn't it? Trying to find a crease anywhere to put his foot in the ground and cut back. It just never materialized. A big play forthcoming. Here's third and goal. They'll try to run with Carson. What a stand so far defensively, and now that's going to bring up a fourth and goal. No gain on the play. Defense didn't budge on third down. Now what are we going to see on fourth? We are soon to find out, but does this feel like old school football or what? Oh, right? yeah. This is an old-fashioned goal line stand. I know what I would call on offense. I would go for it. And I want some type of a play where my quarterback has a chance to run it or throw it. I don't just want one static play. A 19-yard attempt. Myers' kick is good. And they get themselves on the board here. It's 10 to 3. So it's an old school extra point that counts three times. So it's certainly a disappointment they weren't able to get it in the end zone. Yeah, I can just imagine post-game. Head coach looking at the box score, 19-yard field goal, grimacing a little bit, but having to realize that at that moment, getting three points was vital. Go ahead and get the points, put them on the board. The Pats at the line, ready to go. And they're not going to play this conservative, I don't think. They had the field goal last time, and they're up, but they're looking to put a drive in the end zone. Oh, I agree with you totally. No one goes out on the field and says, all right, let's just settle for three, except in certain situations, trying to ice a game, that sort of deal. Most of the time, it's end zone, and that's what you're thinking, and I believe that's exactly what they're thinking as they begin this one. Yeah, no quarterback ever goes out there saying, hey, let's get three, right? <laughs> Not one that I've ever met. One play has him up past the 40 already, and another first and 10. A shotgun snap for Newton. And his throw is incomplete. Demir Bird, the intended receiver, and that'll bring up second down. And this throw a bit late as he couldn't reach back for it. Here now is second and ten again from the 41. Throwing again. Newton. And he'll be taken down, but not before he gets into enemy territory. 11 yards there, first down. This has to go down as one of the simpler routes in the playbook, but oh so effective. Nice completion there. Keeps the sticks moving. On first down, they'll run with Hunt. And he fumbled it. It's on the ground. And the Seahawks have picked it up. And they will take over possession of the football at their 42-yard line. So a first quarter fumble in the rain. And this isn't supposed to let up. They've had flash flood warnings just west of here. So they better get used to this. And it's hard to do real early in the game because you're so amped up and you're trying to do so much. You've got to get used to it, though. You've got to focus in on the ball. Make sure you're taking care of it. That one cost him. And that is incomplete. He couldn't hold on through the contact. Brings up second down. Brandon, we saw these defenders flying to the football in their win last week, and nothing has changed. They're still moving around quickly and forcing incompletions. So now second and ten after the incompletion on first down. 
A throw complete to Dorsett. And he'll get it out a couple yards shy of midfield at the 48. They get six. That'll leave them with third and four. One thing about the Seattle Seahawks offense, they are a run-first group. But when they throw the ball, they want to throw it downfield and sting defenses. And Philip Dorsett provides great speed and a good target downfield in order to get that done. Nice catch there. His speed adds an extra dimension to the Seahawks offense. They face a third and four after that last completion gets them six. Just like that. Just like that. I'll go special. I'll go special. From the gun, it's Wilson. He rifles one that's intercepted. Picked off by Jason McCourty. And he's able to get it back to the 41-yard line. First quarter, and now he already has two interceptions. Yeah, he's got to guard against being tentative from this point forward, though. He's got to still make the right reads, make the proper throws. I've seen guys in this league throw four interceptions in a game and win. He's got to understand. Put it behind you. Keep pressing forward. Now a pass here caught by Edelman. That catch good for only a couple. Ran a perfect defense in this situation. Would have meant that there was an incompletion. They would have picked it off. Okay, so they gave up the completion. But I really enjoyed watching how the defense stayed in sync, stayed in great communication. And as he dragged across each zone, you see him pointing, communicating. There he is, and they passed him off to each defender. Ended up making a nice play, even though it was complete. A yard in the wrong direction makes third down tougher. Third down and nine. Throwing on third down, Newton gets this to Kareem Hunt, his running back. And he gets it just shy of midfield, but that's not enough. He's short of the marker. 10-3 our score after one here on EA Sports. Jake Bailey in punt formation for the Patriots. They only punted twice in the win last week as he gets this one away. So that'll be marked out as a 19-yard punt. And it'll be Seahawk football first and 10. Their own 28-yard punt. Here's the Seattle offense ready to get this drive underway. It's been very much a slow start for them. Three drives and just the three points CD. Yeah, if you're into the points per drive ratio, that answer is one. And that's not going to get it done in a ball game. They've got to find a way to finish these drives in end zones, not having balls go through goalposts. 26 yard line. Behind the chain, second and 12. From the shotgun, Wilson. And Wilson's going to be intercepted a third time. Devin McCourty picks it off. Second straight drive now here, Charles, that have ended with an interception. And I just wonder, because I don't think it's going to rattle him necessarily, but I also wonder if it's going to unnerve him a little bit. Does it lead to another one? Or does he find a way to pull it together and become sharp again? Now following the interception, here's Newton. To the end zone, but it's incomplete. And to put it mildly, this is a tough spot defensively. They have to come right back out and defend their red zone. But how about that good first step towards forcing them to settle for at least three points? I think they're also thinking bigger right now. Imagine being able to stop them totally and change the momentum. They'll run with Hunt on second down. And he'll take this one down near the 15. They do get a yard there, but only a yard. Leaves him with third and nine looming. Absolutely love the effort there. The ability to flow from his inside spot and stop that one at the line of scrimmage. Nice linebacker play. On third down, here's Hunt. And able to get him down, but he does reach the five. They're able to convert on third down, and that sets up a first and goal. First and goal, New England. Out of the gun, Newton. Flush to his right. And he is going to go down. Back at the 11-yard line. Bobby Wagner, multiple times an all-pro, in there to drop him for a loss. Second down and goal. 
So they get pushed back to the 11, and here's second and goal. From the gun, here's Newton. Flushed out right, and it's caught. And he's going to be taken down with a marker on the field. So let's see about the call. So a decent gain, but all for naught on the penalty. That's too bad, isn't it? They were feeling pretty good about it. The only people celebrating, the guys who just gave up that play. And the penalty certainly makes things tougher here as they try again, third and goal. They'll go screen here to Hunt. And here he'll get it down to the seven. That'll bring up fourth down. They wind up getting eight yards, but they needed more than that. For a second there, I thought that might break big. Screen pass. Looked like it was coming together. Looked like there was an opening. Still ended up with a solid game. So what a let off there. You figure that was an easy three points. Instead, it turns into nothing. And from that close of range, if you start it left, your goose is cooked. And this thing well, never had a chance to straighten itself out. into the line here to begin their next drive the Seahawks offense they're sort of seeing themselves spiral out of control let's see if they can get things back on track and this is where the coach is walking that line of being calm and really being firm with his team had one tell me once you know we were having a tough patch this two shall pass this two shall pass and finally we kept having a rough patch he said but you've got to do something heads up to make it pass and that's what they have to do they've got to get some control and he goes down it's a patriot sack lawrence guy able to get in there and drop him for a loss and that's their first sack of this game but how about last week six sacks great coverage downfield which helped that pass rush they are really working in sync right now After the sack, they'll come up now third and long. Yeah, I wouldn't be surprised to see them run the ball here just to try and get some space. Uh, no run call here. They'll look to throw instead. Buying time to his left. He's going to run, but he's got a long way to go. And he is out of bounds, able to get it across the 20-yard line. A solid run of 11 there as he tucked it and ran, but he's still short of the marker at its fourth. On fourth down, ready to punt Michael Dixon. Back deep for New England, Julian Edelman. And it's fielded at the 34. It'll be a 40-yard punt, eight on the return. And the Patriots take over. At their own 43-yard line. The Pats at the line, ready to go. And they have to feel like they missed on an opportunity for points last time when they couldn't connect on that short field goal try. And no doubt about it, because they were counting on those points. In today's NFL, let's face it, that's really a chip shot, right? That's anything inside four. Yeah, they, they're counting on that going through the post. But we've seen it happen to teams before. Some of the best kickers in the world can miss kicks like that. Can they come back now and redeem themselves? To throw on second and six, Newton, and that is incomplete. A lot of force bearing down on him there. He could not hang on. It's third down. He did a fine job there of not hitting him before the ball arrived, and I've got to tell you, you can often mistime that play because of the angles of approach. When you're going to get him, sometimes you panic as well and think, I've got to be there right now. Instead, in this case, timed it perfectly and knocked it free. I'll tell you what, these last couple of drives, much better from a defensive perspective. They gave up a touchdown on the opening drive, and then after forcing a punt on their last possession, it looks like they're going to hit the football back again. They'll score that a 36-yard punt, and possession will switch hands first and 10. At their own 22-yard line. Go 
Here's the Seattle offense ready to get this drive underway. And on the last go around, they really couldn't get anything going. They had to punt from deep inside their own territory, which means they're going to lose the field position battle as a general rule. What they're looking for now is a little more consistency. Move the ball at least a few times on offense, get a couple of first downs, and hopefully flip the field. Yeah, just something to build off of. That's what they're looking for here. Second and five. Our score, 10 to three with two minutes remaining in quarter number two. Coming up in a couple of minutes, we'll get you to Jonathan Coachman in Orlando. The coach will have stats and scores from earlier today in the NFL. On second down now, it's Carson, and he's able to get out to the 32, brought down there. A gain of five, good enough for the first down. Chris Carson has proven to be a workhorse for the Seattle Seahawks, and they continue to expand his game. We know that he can run inside and be a bruising type of a player. But he has surprising speed to the perimeter, and they've expanded his game now by throwing it to him out of the backfield. In 2019, in the top 10 in the league in touches and yards from scrimmage. And incomplete as he was knocked as he threw it, and it took the ball off course. This defense has been very disruptive early on as they force another one to go awry. Seems to be the front and the back in pass rush. They've been able to get home, and they're taking the ball away in coverage as well. I love how you put it together. The front and back working in sync only way to play good defense the Pats are going to get there down he goes Jabal Sheard he's the one that got home and takes him down for a loss of nine third down Wilson of the Seahawks looking for something big following the sack. It's third and long here. This is Carson. And he'll fight forward to about the 27-yard line. Now the Patriots going to use one of their timeouts as the stoppage will come with a little under a minute to go in this first half. Now here's Michael Dixon as he'll kick it away for the second time. Edelman set to return. That'll go as a punt of 34 yards that time. And that will come the offense as they take over. At their own 36-yard line. The Pats at the line ready to go. And they're coming off a three and out, my friend. I think they've got to look at that play sheet and go to a spot that they haven't gone before. Time to shake things up a little bit to try and get this offense moving. Okay, so how do you do that? How do you shake things up? You look at what you've called before, realize that hasn't worked Go to so something well, else. And maybe you try and find one of those special plays from one of your better players, and maybe try and hit something big and get things going in the excitement area. Now the Patriots will use the second of their timeouts as they'll stop the clock with 24 seconds to go in this first half. Newton looking to throw on third and one. Got his man, that's Harry. And he takes this one down almost all the way to the 30. The Patriots will take their third and final timeout as the clock will stop with 18 seconds to go in the first half. From the 32 now, here's first and 10. Throwing again is Newton. He's gonna let this go, back of the end zone. And that's going to be incomplete. 12 seconds left. Intended for Nikhil Harry. Incomplete. It's second down and 10. So on second down, the field goal unit is on here as they try to get three before half. 
It'll be a 49-yard attempt from the left hash. And he missed it. It's no good. And this score will stay right where it is. Now, if this was a clear day in September, I'd say this is well within his range. I'd feel very confident about this kick, but... Let's be honest about it. In these elements, the difficulty level gets ratcheted up by at least a factor of five. Good starting field position here for the Seahawks as they come up first and ten at the 39-yard line. We have hit halftime. Still two more quarters to go. We'll take a timeout. We'll be back after this. You're watching the NFL, and it's on EA Sports. It's in the game. Forecast calling for more of the same. The rain set to continue as we are underway in the second half. Fielded near the back of the end zone. And this will come out to the 25 as Reed opts for the touchback. Coming to the line here to begin their next drive, the Seahawks offense. They're down here, but very much in this game. What, what's the tonality of a coach's talk when a game is within striking distance like this at intermission? Typically, what they're doing is emphasizing the things that went well in the first half and wanting more of that. Sure, you've got to go over some of the errors and clean up some things because there's a reason you're down. But overall, I think they want to stay positive, stay up with this team. We're just starting the second half, and we've got the football. Let's go ahead and punch it in, and then we'll take it from there. See how that recipe works. Six yards to pick up, and that's a first down. Good game by Chris Carson. Picks up a first down, and you just have to love his running style. Talk about a straight-ahead guy, no-nonsense type of a runner. He's averaged 82 yards a game over the last two seasons and had 1,230 yards on the ground in 2019. On first down, Carson, and he'll lose yardage. Brought down at the 32. Dante Hightower breaking through to take him down behind the line. Now on second and 13, Wilson, he'll find Metcalf. And I think the ball's out, and it's picked up by the Patriots. And some room to maneuver. And he's into the end zone. It's a fumble return and a Patriot touchdown. Touchdown, New England. This was a close game. They needed a little breathing room. Boy, they got it right there on that return for a touchdown. Yeah, we would say that this could be huge. Forget it. It was huge. Gave him a comfortable lead. Footing always a concern, but the extra points up and good. And the lead is now 17-3. And you can bet they're preaching two hands on the ball here as the kicks away following that fumble return. And a fair catch signaled for and taken successfully. The Seahawks take over first and 10 at their own 25-yard line. Here's the Seattle offense ready to get this drive underway. And, Charles, they're certainly still right in this game, but they need that offense to wake up and in a hurry. Yeah, I like the way you put it. They certainly did seem to sleepwalk a bit in the first half. Now that their defense has done its job, it's their turn now to go out and try and get some points. Officially, it's a one-yard loss. That's going to bring up second and 11. Ball at the 24 and a second and 11. From the gun, Wilson. That's complete to Disley, the tight end. And he's upended after a gain of two out to the 27. A two-yard pickup. Well, they were unable to make anything really big out of that, but it's not a bad idea to find your tight end and give him an easy completion and keep moving things forward. Almost as bread and butter as a good running back dive play. This offense in desperate need of a conversion as they come up on third down. Operating from the gun, Wilson. 
And they nearly get this all the way to midfield. Mark him down at the 49. Give him 22 there on the third down conversion. It is fun to watch the big man work the middle of the field. How about that post route there? Did an excellent job of getting his head around to look the football in and gain significant yardage. They'll run on first down. It's Carson. And they go backwards here, losing yardage back at the 48-yard line. They'll lose a yard there, and it's second and 11. But these guys got to chop into that deficit. They got to do a much better job in the run game. Caught behind the line of scrimmage, no yardage would be found. Second and 11 now. Wilson. And for the fourth time tonight, it's an interception. Picked off by the All-Pro, Stephon Gilmore. And he's got some space here. And he will score. Touchdown, Patriots. So this defense doubling its pleasure there. Remember, they had the fumble return for a score earlier in the game. And now this time, an interception return for another score. And the lead now to three touchdowns at 21 points. The score, Patriots 24, Seahawks 3. So they throw the pick six. They'll get another shot at it now as this one's in the air. And no return on this one as the fair catch is signaled for and taken. The Seahawks take over first and 10 at their own 25-yard line. Coming to the line here to begin their next drive, the Seahawks offense. And they've sort of lost their way, partner. How do they recalibrate and get this proverbial train back on track? Well, this is where leadership really comes into play. How's the head coach handling it? The offensive coordinator? Sometimes they just make a joke. All right, guys, you had your fun? All right, throw it out the window. Yeah, let's get back on track here. And sometimes that'll work just fine. I guess it's time now to lean on that leadership. Second and 11. They stay on the ground. Again, it's Carson. So he got free of one tackle, but couldn't do a whole lot else. Five yards on the carry there, and it leaves him with third and about six yards to go. Offensive linemen love creating space for their guys carrying the ball, but when that guy also breaks tackles and creates extra yardage, they almost feel like he's one of them, and they really embrace him. This offense in desperate need of a conversion as they come up on third down. From the gun, Wilson. He's got Lockett. And down he goes, but he takes it up to the 40. That is first catch so far. They've held him under wraps, but he's got a first down there. At the 40-yard line. First down, Carson. And he'll push this forward only to about the 42-yard line. He's brought down. Two yards on the carry there. It'll be second down. Well, any lane that might have been open there was closed pretty quickly, and that was because the defensive front, they won that battle at the point of attack at the line of scrimmage. They used great leverage, held their spot, and stacked him up. The last run got a couple. Here's second and eight. To throw is Wilson. They go screen pass to Hyde. And he'll be corralled out across midfield down to the 45. A gain of 13. It's a first down. They ran that one well. And not only did they pick up a nice chunk of yardage on the screen, they sent a message to the defense. Rush the passer all you want, but you better be careful. We can hit you going back the other direction. Still in search of their first touchdown of the game, but they're on the move. First and 10. Operating from the gun. Wilson. He'll find Ballore out of the backfield. And he'll lose yardage here. Back at the 47. That one unable to develop. Never got going. A loss of a couple. And it's second down. 47-yard line. Second and 12 after the first down pass play went backwards for two yards. From the gun, a give to Hyde. 
After getting stuffed on first down, not much better there. Two-yard gain. But they certainly have been able to get him going and establish the run, so I think it's time to abandon that plan and start chucking it all over the park. And you know who's excited about that? The defensive front. They got just pin their ears back and get after him now. Here comes the seventh play now of this drive as this is third and ten. From the gun, Wilson. And my goodness, another interception. Devin McCourty picks it off. And a big return will get him all the way down to the 35. Intercepted. Mm, just a little bit of a rough stretch. Six interceptions now in these last two weeks combined. I know the easy thing is to go back to mechanics, footwork, things of that nature. I'm also wondering, is he getting fooled by what he's seeing on defense? Has the scouting report changed? Are they showing him things different than what he expected? For the second week in a row, he's throwing it to the guys in the wrong color shirts. Yeah, he better figure, whatever the reason is, he better figure it out. It's second and eight. One quarter remains here on a Sunday night. We'll return with more after this. You're watching the NFL on EA Sports. Second down and eight. They stay on the ground again. It's Hunt. And he's going to get this pretty close to a first down as the tackle is made at the Seahawks 27. It's a gain of six. Moves him to a manageable third and two situation. And it's third down. Operating from the gun, Newton looking for Edelman and he hits him. It's complete. And he'll lose yardage here, going down back at the 28. A loss of a yard, and it brings up fourth. Well, they opted not to run it. They completed the pass on third and two, but they lost yardage to bring up four. Well, give credit to the guys on the other side of the ball. They snuffed out the play. But it does bring into question, one, the play call, because they didn't run the ball there. They could have run it. And two, just not getting it. That's got to be deflating for them. So it's three more points, and that widens this thing out even further here in the fourth. And you know in this league, you can never have enough points, but this widens it out, as you said, and now it's all about ball control, isn't it? Here's Reed returning. And a decent return out to the 27-yard line. The Seahawks take over first and 10 at their own 27-yard line. Here's the Seattle offense ready to get this drive underway. And there are parts of their last drive they'd like to emulate. And of course, they'd like to forget the inning, the interception. But they did put together, Charles, a nice sustained drive to get him down the field. Yeah, and unfortunately for them, the only thing that matters is part two, right? Because once they threw the interception and finished off the drive, it does them no good to go back and say, well, you know, we had a good one going. Finish things First off. That's the only way you can get it done. Yard line. So here's a first and 10 at the 38. They run it with Carson. And he'll be taken down, but not before he works it past the 50. That one good for 14 and a Seahawk first. Oh, that's one to warm the hearts of all those old school football players, isn't it? Tough, hard, gritty run. Got behind his pads, bowled over a few people. Look at that one, right up the gut. Saw it through three quarters, no reason to lighten up now. Here's the throw dropped off to his fullback. And they go backwards here, losing yardage back at the 48-yard line. Uh, despite the completion, they're going to wind up losing three there. Second down. Behind the chain, second and 13. From the gun, Wilson escaping the pressure right. And he can't find anywhere to go with it, and he goes down. 
We've been around this league for a while, and many coaches never pull their starting quarterback, almost no matter the situation. In this case, though, I think he's got to make a decision. He's taking a pretty good beating out there. Yeah, and with the deficit, maybe not wanting to risk an injury. Wilson of the Seahawks looking for something big following the sack. It's third and long here. Operating from the gun. Wilson complete here. It's high. And they will advance this across midfield, but still well shy of a first as he's tackled at the 47. That one good for only six, and it leaves him with a fourth down. Now here's Michael Dixon as he's on to punt for Seattle. think Edelman will be able to get to this one and problem spreading to the punt team now this one goes all the way into the end zone on the fly so that'll come back to the 20 the Pats at the line ready to go they've got a chance now to put this game away following that last defensive stop and punt they'll start with Hunt on the ground and he will lose yardage on the play. Back at his own 19-yard line. Officially, it's a one-yard loss. That's going to bring up second and 11. A second and 11 for the 19. At the 19-yard line. They run again with Hunt. He'll be dropped at the 25 after a gain of six. When you enter the game as the AFC Player of the Week award winner, you expect runs like that and then some. It was fun to watch him in the opener last week in week one. He was spectacular and open for more here in week two. And he loses the football a second time. And the Seahawks have picked it up. And his guys are going to take over at the 39-yard line. All these years we've been watching the game, I start to get the sense that whenever it rains out, those guys who have to touch the ball and carry it, they're extremely resentful about that weather. Yeah, I'm just happy I'm not resentful that we have a roof over our heads. I know that much. Yeah, maybe we won't fumble our play sheets here as we just saw the fumble happen on the field. Meanwhile here, a run on first down really backfires as he's going to be brought down well behind the line of scrimmage. I think this offense, specifically this running game, they're going to have to find a way to turn the page because because they haven't found a way to run it effectively thus far, and it's cost them. Second and 16. Back to the ground. This time it's high. They'll get four back there on the run, but now they're looking up at a third and 12 situation. When you find that kind of yardage, you couldn't be more confident as a ball carrier. And guess what? You're going to go back and tell your offensive coordinator, I'd like to keep carrying it, thank you. And the Seahawks on third down. Not so hot. Two for nine to this point. This is third down and 12. Eluding the pressure right. And incomplete. He had nowhere to throw, so he just tossed it away. But that brings up fourth. That incompletion is not a surprise with the way that this one has gone, and the frustration of body language is evident everywhere. This team, they've really been put through the ringer in this one. All right, they're going to try and keep hope alive here on fourth down. They're going for it. Flush to his right. And he goes down. It's a Patriots sack. Brandon Copeland. And the Patriots defense is going to take over on downs. And they'll come out with a three tight end look on the first play of the drive. And he's going to be met at the line of scrimmage and taken down. No gain on the play as we have reached the two minute warning. So the Patriots with a football as we get you reset. And the scoreboard on their side, they're just looking to melt away these final couple of minutes and put this one in the left-hand column. Four yards the gain, and it'll bring up a third down. On any running play this call, they're always hoping that it's going to break big and go the distance. But when you get a nice game like that, 
you're able to do so many things anyway. You can come back and run essentially the same play again, continue to move the ball on the ground, or you can decide to throw the ball now because usually you have the defense back on its heels. Ball at a gain of three, and it'll bring up fourth down. But this was just simply excellent defense. On this third down, they had to be alert for the possibility of a pass, but that didn't stop them at all from understanding what was going on when they decided to run the football, and they just swarmed and stuffed them for almost no gain. The Patriots send out their punter as he'll come on to kick this one away. Looking into the rain drops and he muffs it. And for an offense that is struggling, this is not where you want to start from. Great punt. Fantastic punt. And for all those who wonder, what do punters do during the course of practice each and every day? The best ones do what we just saw there. Work on positioning the football and helping their team. And they're able to swarm him behind the line, and his rough night continues. Oh, Earl Thomas coming up from that safety spot to make sure he didn't get back to the line of scrimmage. Thirteen yards remaining on second down. Now it's Carson. And he's going to take this up past the 10 to about the 11. It'll be a five-yard pickup there. So from second and 13, they're back to a more manageable third and eight. Brings up third and eight. This will wind up a victory for the New England Patriots. And you know, it wasn't a shutout. They did give up the... She back at me. Yeah. Hey, boy, you got yeah. go okay. <laughs> Sometimes you need a friend. Not the ones that just show up and don't put nothing in. You know the ones that lend their hand and want to see you win.